here are two thrown mugs with the image transfer done, but let's pull out those stamps uh, of the, the pointed finger, some circles, the stars. The cups have been sanded down because any of the cut marks from the X-Acto knife or the, the um, sewing tool kind of gives a little bit of some sharp edges sometimes. So be sure to sand that down ever so slightly. Well, I find that it's important to use the velvet line of Amico at home if you have your own stains, by all means, please use them. Um, I've tried using the liquid underglaze line from Amico and because of the heavy pigments, they have a tendency to really stain and saturate the surface of your bisque work. I bisque at cone 04 so that way the clay body is a little bit tighter and allows me to wipe off the underglaze material better than if it was say cone 08 or a cone 06 bisque. Sometimes again the stain will really stain the clay body or the bisque wear rather than give it a nice wipe away. Let's say for the horses, horse mug, we're going to use uh, red Amico Velvet underglaze. We're only going to brush one coat. Uh, although the directions say, you know, two to three coats, um, for this process that we're about to do, you don't need to use all that. It would be more of a waste. Uh, and in fact, I add a little bit of water to even kind of allow it to, to move further. So I like to get a good overall coverage. So the whole cup will get underglazed. I don't worry about the interior of the mug. The interior of the mug will get, get its own opaque glaze, liner glaze, so it wouldn't matter if I stained the inside or not. I'm going to leave the bottom of the mug as well as the handle untouched by the red as I will approach that with black. So just incorporating different colors, being loose, and so I will now let the red set and I'll go over a couple of those spots with black. Meanwhile, while that dries, we'll move back to the other mug where I have a hand-drawn pattern. I'm going to apply black over the mug and because black has a darker, richer pigment, this will actually stain the body a bit. Still, it gives me the color of the image that I want, but you'll see the difference of the black stained bisque wear versus black on top of red when the red acts as a resist. You'll see that when I sponge, the reason why I do not go over two or three times is when I wipe off with the sponge, it picks up so much of what's on the surface and really just leaves behind the stuff in the recessed areas. The dotted lines, the stars. Staining gives it also a kind of an antique look, some age. I fancy the process because I feel that it gives it more of a graphic look to it as well, enhancing and emphasizing on the lines. If I'm lucky, it will catch underneath finger fingerprints. All right, so the handle, the bottom, the walls are finished there. Let's come back to the red. It's almost all absorbed into it. It's pretty much dry. So now I'm going to go back over this with black, only in selected areas. The foot, the handle. Notice that I'm not being um, I'm pretty loose. I'm not being ultra precise. It has to go here, it has to go there. I like having room for, I don't just say surprise and spontaneity, but allowing the material to also do its thing and embracing that. So in applying it all on here, I'm just getting loose because once I sponge it off, a lot of that's going to go away. I'm applying it to the bottom dashed line. And that's more of a, the decision to do that kind of has to do with just composition a little bit that way. I have a heavier line on the bottom of the cup. Black has a tendency to really draw your eye to it. And so I'm going to add uh, some blemish also, not just to the black dashed line, but there's a, three, there's a set of three stars right by my brush. And I might fill up one star there, the question mark, a little circle there. That way the little red line out of nowhere gives you a little black circle. So the hand on the handle pointing to the dashed line. I'm hoping that, that by that hand being black will relate to the black hand. I want to use graphic design and design elements and principles to be able to allow the viewer just to kind of unknowingly rotate the cup as they look around. So as that dries, let's return back to the black mug. I don't like to super saturate it with water and begin from the bottom.
As you see that I'm not using gloves when using this process, the underglazes are a non-toxic formula. There are some stains out there that I recommend that, you know, if you're making your own or using a shop, be sure to find out what's in the, what's in the stains that you're using, if there's heavy metals or anything. And really just begin with a light brushing of the sponge. And it really makes that dotted line punch. That star now has, even though it's recessed, and it's pushed into the clay, it really pops out now because of the black. And this really, at this point, is a personal taste. How much do you want to wipe away? Do you want it to only be the stamped areas that have black? Would you care to have little blemishes of black in certain areas? Again, that kind of just hints at age. Some of the things that I find beautiful while working in my studio during this process is that where the slip here is kind of, I don't want to say chip, more of like a kind of a crackle, it fills in that and it just gives more of a visual interest to the surface. For the longest time I've been like old carnival posters, um, chipping or shredding off of um, billboards or walls and just seeing the antiquity of brightly covered, colored advertisements, but through age and dirt and grime, how maybe torn edges and such become dirty. And that's what I like about the stains. Around the handle here, it kind of looks like it's caught some of that grime. So now moving back to using the two colors, and you can use three, you can use four, whatever your heart's desire. I'd practice with one first, then move into two. But what's nice here is that you'll see that the black on this first one really stained, got into the surface of some of them, and, and toned down the bright colors. We'll start off at the bottom again. And what's nice about having the red is that it's, it's not as direct and strong as black. Although red is still a very strong color and it draws our eye, black is gonna be more demanding of your attention. And so having little blemishes of red in the, in the bisque wear is just nice. So from here, what I would do with uh, the stained bisque work, um, for my functional work, such as mugs, I would put a, a, a liner glaze on the inside and just a clear glaze on the exterior of my mugs. Uh, so that way it really enhances the imagery that's on the surface. That's it.